Johnny Dollar. This is Harrison Hadley in Buffalo, New York. Hadley. That's right. I'm the local agent for Masters Insurance and Trust. Oh, of course, Mr. Hadley. It's been some time since I've had to call on you. Well, what seems to be your problem, sir? Fire. Fire. Well, actually, fires, Mr. Dollar. Two of them. Go on. One of them occurred yesterday. The other started only a few hours ago. As a matter of fact, the fire department is still fighting it. And you suspect arson? I sure do. So, Dollar, if you can come out here right away... I certainly can. Good. Now, I'll arrange for a room in your name at the Statler. And if you'll contact me when your plane gets in... Uh, Mr. Hadley. Yes? How much insurance have you written on those fires? Well, on this warehouse burning now, it's something over $200,000. Okay. So, for both of them, it means about $400,000. Fine, then you can afford it. Oh, sure. Afford what? My expense account. Oh, well, of course we can. I mean, for two. Expense account for two? Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand. You will when I see you. Bye. CBS Radio brings you Bob Reddick in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Masters Insurance and Trust Company Buffalo office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the wayward fireman matter. A lot of people have the mistaken idea that a lot of the crimes that are solved are solved by a lot of clever, mysterious Sherlock Holmes type of deduction or by the equally mysterious and super-scientific razzmatazz that goes on within the confines of some of our fabulous modern crime laboratories. All right, some of them are. But most of the crimes I deal with are solved by nothing more than a lot of work and a lot of sweat, and above all, information. Now, that means stoolies, informers, other criminals. Well, listen, and you'll see what I mean. Expense account item one, $14.25 for telephone calls. To locate and contact my old friend, Smokey Sullivan, who's now playing it straight after a long career in the underworld, who is best known by the police throughout this country for his work as... Yeah, you guessed it. For his work as an arsonist. Uh, yeah, Johnny. I'm living here in uh, uh, Syracuse now. Oh, well, that's fine, Smokey, because you're close the to the place. The only reason you caught me here in my rooming house, though, is a kind of... I got a couple of days off for my new job. Well, I'm glad I now, caught you, you, Smokey. You know what my new job is now, Johnny? The important thing is you're only a stone's throw from Buffalo. I'm, uh... I'm working for the city. And if you have a couple of days Honey, off... you're going to fall right down on your face when I tell you what kind of a job... Well, what I'd like you to do... Sm- oh, what did you say? Uh, Johnny, I'm, uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a special consultant for the arson squad. You're what? <laughs> Johnny, for the arson squad. <laughs> well, that is a switch, <laughs> but a good one. I'm glad you're staying on our side of the law. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know something, Johnny? No, what? W- with me here in S- Syracuse, every single firebug must have left town. <laughs> and you know something, Smokey? Uh, no, what? With you on the job against them, I don't blame them. <laughs> but now you say you have a couple of days off. Uh, yeah. Well, then take a plane or a train or whatever you can get over to Buffalo. Uh, b- Buffalo? That's right. There'll be a room in my name at the Statler Hotel for the two of us. Go there and wait for me, and I'll be along as soon as I can. Uh, the big Molly warehouse fire that just come in over the wires, huh? Yeah, among other things. Uh-huh. So will you meet me there at the Statler? Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. Item two, $31 even for a cab to Bradley Field, a plane to New York and a plane to Buffalo. It was late in the afternoon by the time we circled the big bustling city with its huge steel plants and blast furnaces, its flour mills and chemical plants, grain elevators, railroad yards and rubber factories, and its busy harbor at the northeastern end of Lake Erie. As soon as we sat down at the greater Buffalo International Airport, I picked up my luggage and started to look for a taxi. Dollar! Hmm? Dollar, over here. 
Are you on Mr. Hadley? Yes, Harrison Hadley. Don't tell me it's been that long since you've been here. Or is it this slight paunch I've developed and a few prematurely gray hairs? How are you? I'm fine, fine, Mr. Hadley. And for heaven's sakes, call me Harrison, or better still, Harry. Right, right. Well, now, come on. I got my car idling away in a no-parking zone. Unless I'm mistaken, that policeman doesn't like it. You're right, but here we are. All right, slide in. Throw your bag in the back. Right you are. Come on. That's all right, officer. Pulling out right now. Well, you better, mister, if you don't want a ticket. Okay, now, Harry, what about these fires? Well, Johnny, first, concerning the loss at a small department store yesterday, the police are absolutely sure it was arson. And the owner of the store has been having a hard time paying his bills lately. So one and one makes two. It makes nearly 200000 we'll have to pay off unless the police can prove he had the fire set. Or we can catch the firebug and get it out of him. Now tell me about the other. A warehouse for scrap rubber. And again, the owner, a man by the name of Morley, has been having financial troubles. So two and two makes four hundred thousand. Right. And in the case of the warehouse, the police are sure the same incendiary method was used. Well, now, don't they keep a list of torch men and their methods? Of course. But, Johnny, these two fires have them stopped. Now, apparently, it's some method they've never known to be used before. Well, I bet I know somebody who'll recognize it. Oh, really? Who? This friend of mine I mentioned over the phone. The one I've invited along to give me a hand. Well, who is he? Well, just get me into the Statler and I'll introduce you. And you say this, uh, this ex-crook is now working with the police? That's right. If I know Smokey, there'll be no arson there in Syracuse as long as he's around. Well, then they're probably wishing he hadn't come on over here to Buffalo to give you a hand for a couple of... Well, here we are. Now, let's just hope he's already here so that we can... Smokey? Uh, I guess not. Hmm? What was that? Somebody banged down a window somewhere in the back of this... Wait a minute. Smokey? Smokey, you are... Oh, no. What is it, Johnny? What's wrong? Smokey. Now, Smokey, listen to me. Looks to me like we got here too late. Smokey? Can you hear me, Smokey? It looks to me like he's dead. An operation to correct microstenosis is an everyday experience in this day and age. Even more advanced surgery of the heart involving heart-lung machines and other modern equipment is no longer rare and highly successful in saving lives. Humanity owes a great deal for living at a time when many conditions involving the heart can be corrected through diet, through day-to-day -day care, through drugs, and where necessary, through surgery. But we are a long way from conquering many of the causes of heart and artery sickness. Impressive as are the victories already won, the battles ahead for science and medicine are imposing. They can be won with massive support. This support can be given most effectively to your local heart association. This month, seeking funds to continue the job. Help your heart fund. Help your heart. Be generous. The work is vital and the diseases won't cure themselves. Expense account item three, ten fifty, and a dollar tip for a bottle of brandy provided by room service. With that and a couple of wet towels, I managed to bring Smokey Sullivan back to consciousness. Barely, because he was in pretty bad shape. And whoever had given him this beating was certain to think he'd left him dead. Whoever did it, Johnny, must have got out by that window we heard slam as we came in here. No doubt of it, Harry. Uh... And then he must have crawled along the ledge out there to another room or fire escape or something. Yeah. Now, Smokey... Uh, he... Yeah, Johnny. As soon as the doctor gets here, we'll know if you have no, any broken... No, 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 look, no, no, doctor, Johnny. Hmm? You think of the... Think a little thing like like that, a, a couple of slaps on the head. Think? I know it. I can see it. You're badly hurt. No, no, look, I'm going to be all right, Johnny. Oh, we'll see and, and listen, after the doc gets through with listen, you. Listen, Johnny. Yeah? It was, it was, it was bottles. Bottles? Yeah, bottles, Burton. Bottles Burton did this to you? Uh, yeah. Bottles Burton? That's a man's name? Uh, yeah, because of his chemicals, his, his trick. Yeah? His trick with the uh, bottles of chemicals to set a fire. Oh, I see. Uh, look, uh, give, uh, give me a little more sip of that, huh? Yeah, sure. Here. Here you 
are. Yeah. Thanks. He's, uh... He's a bad one, Johnny. And he must be crazy to have plowed into you like this. He's, uh... uh he's a... Pyromaniac. Pyromaniac? Yeah, it has been ever, ever since a kid. Uh... They sent him up to the state hospital for it. I see. Well, now you just take it easy. O- only, only way they could keep him from starting fires there, they let him shovel coal in the big furnace in the powerhouse. And that gave him all the fire he wanted, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but then they, they thought they had him cured, so they let him go. And ever since... And ever since, he's been a torch man for hire. Oh, no, Johnny. What do you mean, no? Well, of course he has. No, no. Because, because like I say, he's... He's like a maniac. I, I, I mean, he would never set a fire for money. O- only for himself. You're sure of that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, then, Harry, maybe your plan owners didn't hire him after no, all. No, not him. Well, nevertheless, Johnny, you've got to stop him now that you know who he is. Not only because it means a public service on the part of our company, but, well... Because if he isn't stopped, your company may have to pay off some more of these big claims. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and listen... Now, listen, are you sure that it isn't too much for you, Smokey, until yeah, the doc yeah, gets here? Yeah, yeah, Johnny, I'm sure. Because, listen... Yeah? Uh, part of his, uh... Part of this, uh, this maniac... Yeah? Always three fires in a row. Three days in a row. Oh, that means he'll start another one tonight. Uh, so if you don't stop him, Johnny... And b- before he could get to you, Johnny... Well, as long as he doesn't know I'm in town, let's not worry about that. Well, but <laughs> he must know. What? Yeah, yeah. Well, why do you think that? He was, he was so surprised when he saw me open this door. Me thinking it was you that knocked. So he, uh, he, he must have thought it was you here in this room. A kind of a room is in your name. Well, how could he possibly... Harry, did you tell anyone I was coming here? Well, knowing you'd want to work with them, as you always do, I did phone the police. And if there was a radio newsman, a reporter standing around, and there probably was... Oh, great. And now to make matters worse, Burton must know that Smokey's here to work with me. I'm sorry, Johnny. Only now he thinks I'm dead. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Or if he doesn't, maybe we can... Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it, Johnny? You have some idea for... uh... Only if he he does for sure know that you're here, Johnny, he... Mm. Are you you listening, Johnny? Mm Hmm? Oh, yes. Yes, sure. Go ahead. Well, I... I don't don't think he'd start that third fire tonight, knowing you might tag him. I think he'd lay low. Well, Well, that's fine. If nothing else, then, Johnny, that'll give you time. Maybe. Now, Smokey, tell me everything you can about him, about this Bottles Burton. His yeah. habits, the kind of friends he picks up, what sort of place he might find to live, anything. Oh, well, he'd, uh, he'd always get a job, Johnny. What kind? Like maybe a fireman. Fireman? fireman. Like in some powerhouse or, or, or maybe around some blast furnace. Or some place where there's fire. Oh, I see. Smokey, you've just given me a wild idea. Uh, yeah? If I can get a mug shot of him, and there must be one around somewhere. Uh, yeah? What is this idea, John? It's worth a try. Now, Harry. Yes? Make whatever deal you have to with this hotel to have him play along with me. Then get it out to the radio and the press that Smokey here is dead as a result of this beating. That his body has been taken to the morgue. Oh? Only, of course, he'll stay right here. Well, I'm afraid I don't... Now, you let that news out right away, Okay. Whatever you say, Johnny. But why? Just wait and see. The commander. Welcome aboard. Try new king size Philip Morris commanders. New because the tobacco in them is vacuum cleaned. And the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Yes, the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Philip Morris Commanders are made by a new kind of machine, the Mark 8, that takes rich, full-flavored tobacco and first... 
gently vacuum cleans it, then rolls the cigarette fully, evenly, cuts the ends clean and firm. The result is new Philip Morris Commanders with the cleanest tobacco ever rolled in a cigarette. Try a pack. You'll get a full, round, king size of solid smoking pleasure because the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Noticeably better. Have a commander. Welcome aboard. Expense account item four, a dollar even for a taxi to police headquarters. Yeah, they had a mug shot of Burton. They simply hadn't been able to connect his method with those fires. They gave me a copy, and of course they swore they'd do everything they could to flush him out if he was still around. And then, I played my hunch. And item five is 1870 in taxi fares, checking around a flock of fire department stations until, finally... Sure, Mr. Dollar. Only his name isn't Burton. He called himself Charlie Smith. Smith, huh? Yes, sir. This is his picture, all right. He's one of my boys, all right. Good, good. Now, just where can I... Or rather, he was. What do you mean by that, Chief? He just didn't report for work, and we haven't seen him here at the firehouse since. Since when? Oh, a couple days ago. I checked his rooming house where he lives off duty, and he's left there, too. And you have no idea where I might find him... Might start to look for him? No, I'm afraid not, sir. It's funny, too. What do you mean, funny? He was a good man. It always seemed like he... Well, almost like he enjoyed his work around the fire. <laughs> That's the understatement of the week. I walked on back to the hotel, and there, over his stormy protest, moved smoking into the room next to mine, but left the connecting door ajar. After all, I didn't want him in any further danger. But as soon as I feel good again, Johnny, you gotta let me help you find him. Only if, if, if he set that wacky mind of his to start another fire tonight... You just stay quiet and rest that broken head of yours. If I find you trying to climb out of bed, I'll clout you one myself. Uh, okay, Johnny. I'll be right here in the next room, so if you want anything, you holler, okay? Johnny. Yeah? Look, uh, Burton may go nuts waiting for you to leave town. I mean, so he can set that third fire. And being a killer, too... Now, wait, wait. Maybe you've given me the answer. Uh, yeah? Yeah, Smokey. Yeah. I tore on over the radio station, WBEN, over on Elmwood Avenue. Bill Peters, the program manager, was still around. Better still, he was willing to cooperate with me 100%. Darn it, Johnny, I'm sorry. If I'd known you wanted to keep it a secret, I'd have kept the word of your coming here off our newscast. Well, it's too late now, Bill. But not even the papers, not even the evening news had it, so I let it go on. And what that means is that he keeps a check on things through your news program. This Burton, the firebug? Yes, and that's good. Because if you'll let me write a piece of copy for your next couple of newscasts... Yeah, here. Here now. Ah. It'll air in about 20 minutes. The newscaster will be Jack Ogilvy. Good. Now just have him read this as is. I got back to the Statler just in time to hear Jack Ogilvy's news on the little radio there in my room. But he called again tomorrow throughout this whole area. Oh, and here's another item in connection with the Morley Warehouse fire. Johnny Dollar, the investigator called in by the insurance company, is leaving the case. No doubt because of the death of his colleague, a man with the unlikely name of Smokey Sullivan. Dollar, we are informed, checked out of his hotel just a few minutes ago and is on his way back to Hartford. Could he have been afraid of this pyromaniac killer? Doesn't sound like him. And now let me give you the local weather report again. Mm-hmm. Now we'll just wait and see what we... Smokey. Hi, Johnny. Now look, Bob, you have orders to stay in bed. Uh, 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 that announcer I heard on the radio... That news item was a plant. Now go on back to bed. Well, I'm all right, I'm... 
Oh, fine. Just fine. So now I gotta carry you back to bed. And then, sitting there alone in my room, I wondered. Smokey had said that Burton was clever in his own twisted way. Clever enough to fall for my trick... Well, there was only one thing to do. Wait and see. I didn't have to wait long. Yeah? Yeah, who is it? Mr. Dollar? That's right. A uh, telegram, sir. Okay, coming. Hello, Burton. Oh. Oh, you... You know me, huh? Who else would have come in here waving a Shut gun? Shut keep, keep your hands up, see? Now sit up. Sit up. There in that chair. The other side of that door. Now keep faced away. Faced away from me, you understand? See? Sure. But didn't you get the word that I'd left town? Oh, I knew that was a trick. That's why you came here, huh? Because I had to make sure. I had to make sure, see? And you mean that you, a smart punk like you, you were afraid to set another blaze with me around town? Well, you won't be around. Not now, because... I'm going to kill you. Because I got to set another fire. I just got to understand, you see? So I'm... I'm going to kill you, Dollar. Now, look, for No! No, don't, don't move. Keep your hands up! Now, here. Let me... Yeah. Yeah. See? I knew you had a gun. Because I know everything. Like I know... I got to set that third fire. Like I know... I gotta kill you. Yeah. Yeah, Dollar. Now! Oh. Oh. Smokey! I'm, I'm sorry I had to bust this chair on him, Johnny. It's okay, Smokey. You did okay coming through that connecting door. Uh. Son of a gun, I told you to stay in bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I guess I wasn't as strong as I... You want to help me, Johnny? You bet I do. Well, it's up to the courts, naturally. And this time, I'm betting there'll be no parole for Burton, ever. Not only because of the fires, but the murder attempt on Smokey. And come to think of it, on me. As for the insurance money that'll have to be paid out, well, you can't win them all. Expense account total, including room and board and Smokey's expenses, plus a little gratuity and to cover his doctor's bills, $227 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, another locked room mystery. It's called The Too Tired Matter. Remember that title and join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Reddick, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato, Jr., Musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in our cast were Nat Poland as Smokey Sullivan, Bill Smith as Harrison Hadley, Bernard Grant as Burton, George Petrie as Bill Peters, Robert Dryden as the Chief. Jack Ogilvy of WBEN played himself. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hannah speaking. Recently on CBS Radio Network's House Party, host Art Linkletter asked a six-year-old Muppet on the kids' panel what he planned to be when he grows up. A policeman, the youngster replied. Art probed further, and how will you know the ones to arrest? How do bad people look? The short would-be lawman had a fast answer. Crooks have black and white stripes all over them. Regular listeners hear such laughable logic all the time from the kids on House Party, a regular feature on the show. Be listening for Art and his guests weekdays right here.